So we are working on finding the distance between two points or two ordered pairs. In the last video, I gave you very easy examples of this, where our two points were either straight vertical or straight horizontal from each other. So it's really like finding the distance of one dimension. Or our two points lined up on our axes, drawing us a very nice right triangle in which Pythagorean's theorem was very easy to see. In this video, we're going to be doing some more complicated examples, but I want to prove to you that Pythagorean's theorem will always work, and then I'll finally actually give you that distance formula that I promised. So let's look at a third example here where I'm trying to find the distance between negative 5, 1 and 7, negative 3, which I have drawn here on the right. Now, I'm going to use Pythagorean's theorem to solve this one. It's a little bit more difficult than the last example, but not much. The difficult part in this one is trying to visualize your triangle to begin with. But now that we know what we're looking for, it's hopefully not going to be that bad. I can draw my triangle in one of two ways. I can draw it by a lower triangle, where I do a straight vertical distance here and a straight horizontal distance there. Or I can draw an upper triangle by drawing a straight horizontal distance here and a straight vertical distance there. Either one of them will give me a right triangle in which I can use Pythagorean's theorem to come up with the distance of my hypotenuse or the length of my long side. I'm going to use the lower triangle, but if you use the upper triangle, that would work all in the same. At this time, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can come up with your distance between these two points. And I want both a simplified exact answer and an approximate answer rounded to three decimal places. Okay, the first thing that I need to do is label the sides of my triangle. I'm going to label my horizontal one A, my vertical one B, but if you rearranged them, it would be no big deal. And my hypotenuse, which we typically label as C, I'm going to label it as D for distance. So Pythagorean's theorem is A squared plus B squared is equal to, in this example, D squared. I need to figure out where my distance of A is, and I can do that by counting the tick marks, or I can do that by using the formula which we saw earlier, the absolute value of the difference between my two X values. And my two X values are negative 5 and 7. So negative 5 minus 7 gives me the absolute value of negative 12, where that simplifies to be 12. So if I count the number of tick marks between this point and this point, there should be 12 tick marks in between. To come up with my distance of B, same method, absolute value of one of them minus the other, my two Y values, 1 and negative 3. So I have 1 minus a negative 3. My two negatives cancel out, giving me 4. So the distance of my side B is 4, and again, I can confirm that by counting 4 tick marks. So I just need to plug these numbers in for my A and B, and then solve that equation to figure out what D or distance stands for. So A is 12 squared plus B is 4 squared, and that should be equivalent to my distance squared. 12 squared gives me 144 plus 4 squared gives me 16, and 144 plus 16 gives me 160. To get rid of my square, I do the opposite operation, square root it. Typically, when I force in a square root, I need to force in both a positive and a negative. But since I'm talking about distance, which I know has to be positive, we get to kind of ignore my negative option here. So you might think that your exact solution is square root of 160. But if you can simplify the square root, then you must do so. And I'm going to do it by using that good pi, bad pi process. The good pi that goes into square root of 160 is 16, because 16 is the largest square that goes in there. 
and 16 times 10 simplifies to be 160. So my exact answer is 4 times the square root of 10 because I simplify the square root of 16 and that gives me 4. So this is your most simplified version of your exact answer. Now, if this is an applied problem and I'm actually trying to find the distance of a wall or something like that, then four square roots of 10 does not make a whole lot of sense. So sometimes it's better to figure out the approximate answer or the decimal approximation. We can do that by plugging this in the calculator and we can do this by plugging either my non-simplified version into the calculator or my simplified version into the calculator. And you can actually do this to double check that your simplified version is the correct version of your non-simplified version. Plug them both in and make sure you get the same answer. So pull up my calculator here. Let me type in the first non-simplified version of square root of 160. That gives me 12.649, so on and so forth. And if I type in 4 times the square root of 10, that also gives me 12.649. That tells me that I have simplified it correctly using good and bad pi. So my approximate answer then is 12.649. Now make sure you read what the homework asks for, whether it wants an exact answer, an approximate answer, or both. And if it wants an approximate answer, make sure you round it to the appropriate number of decimal places. Here I've rounded it to three decimal places. Okay, so we've seen how to solve this one by using Pythagorean theorem. Now let me actually introduce the distance formula to you. So here's the formula. The distance between two generic ordered pairs, my first one is x1, y1, and my second one is x2, y2, is given by this formula here. The square root of x2 minus x1, quantity squared, plus y2 minus y1, quantity squared. Well, you might ask yourself, how can they come up with such a complicated formula? And this is an answer that you should already know because this is the process that we've walked through in the last three examples. This is Pythagorean's theorem, just worked in a different way than what you're used to seeing. So let me prove that to you. Pythagorean's theorem is a squared plus b squared is equal to d squared. Well, to get rid of the square off of our d, we square root it. So that's where this big square root comes from. Now notice inside the square root, I have something squared plus something squared. Well, if I look inside my Pythagorean theorem, I have something squared plus something squared. So this first here corresponds to A, and this second here corresponds to B. Well, you might ask, well, how do they come up with A and B then? Well, that's the formula that we've been using. The distance of a one-dimensional value is the absolute value of one x-coordinate subtracting the other x-coordinate. Well, the reason that we don't have absolute value is because if I took this and I squared it like we saw up here, it will always end up to be positive. So I don't need the absolute value in my formula because the square confirms that it's positive. And same thing with this here. That's the distance of my vertical coordinate or the absolute value of one of them minus the other. So the way that they came up with the distance formula is by using the same method that we have been using, by using Pythagorean's theorem. So if you ever forget the formula, the hint is to work Pythagorean theorem in a different direction than what you're used to. So let's do example three again, but let's do it by using our distance formula this time. 
Now, I need to set up my two ordered pairs here. So let me write my first one as x1, y1, and my second one as x2, y2. Now, I labeled the first point as ones and the second point as twos, but if you rearrange them, no big deal. It will work out the same way. So plugging this in my distance formula, d equals the square root of my x2 value of 7 minus my x1 value of negative 5 squared, so I'm just following my formula up here, plus my y2 value of negative 3 minus my y1 value of 1 squared. Simplify the inside of my parentheses. 7 minus a negative 5, cancel out the double negatives, make sure you don't lose them, that's one of the biggest mistakes that I see is 12 squared plus negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4 squared. Notice we've seen these numbers before, 12 and 4. We saw them when we did example 3 by just using Pythagorean's theorem. We saw them right here, 12 and 4. The only difference is by using the formula, we have a negative involved. But that won't matter because it'll cancel out with our square. So 12 squared gives us 144, plus 4 squared gives me 16. That simplifies to give me square root of 160, which we know we can simplify the square root to end up to be root 16, root 10, or our most simplified version of this is 4 square root of 10. If we wanted the approximate answer, we know that we could just type that in the calculator and we would get 12.649. So we see that either way we do it by using Pythagorean's theorem or the formula, we get the same answer. And that's because the formula comes from Pythagorean's theorem. Both of them have their advantages. The advantage of just using Pythagorean's theorem is you don't have to memorize a formula. And the advantage of memorizing the formula is notice that we don't really have to draw it up and get a visual. I'm going to stop this video here because of time, but I'm going to do one more example in the next video of using the distance formula.